54,000 levels and particularly talking about Sensei, good strength coming in on that particular indices today. What is the next uh, level of support and resistance that we are likely to see for this for the benchmark? Absolutely, Sheryl. I think uh, you know we were discussing this uh, on Sensex yesterday as well. That how Sensex has a resistance which is very similar to the Nifty, uh, closer to that 54,000 mark. So today the Sensex has managed to break above that 54,000 levels for itself, and more importantly, it's also coincided with the breakout of the 50-day moving average. So if the Sensex closes above this 54,000 levels, assuming until the second half of the day today, then we can expect that the indices would get up and get up into a second round of a strong uptick for itself. So now the next level of targets, assuming if Sensex closes above the 54,000 mark, should be on the higher sort of at least 55,000 to 56,000 over the next one or two weeks. Okay. All right. Um, well, that's a view on the benchmark index. It has uh, given up just a tad bit of uh, the gains in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. But it's time to start taking viewer questions. And uh, by the way, if you're tuning in for the first time, here's the drill. You can send us a query on any one of our social media platforms or indeed on the WhatsApp number that is flashing on your screen. Tell us your name. Tell us the stock that you'd like to know about. If you've already acquired the stock, then tell us the level that you bought it at. And finally, also tell us your uh, time frame that is would you like to hold it for less than a year which is a short-term view or if you'd like to hold it for the long term uh, the first question that I'm taking is on Indian Overseas Bank we've got uh, Lakshmi Narayanan who is writing in from Chennai and he's bought IOB at levels of 76 uh, and this is way back in 2014 Avinash the question is should he hold on or should he exit and buy something else I think uh, Alex, this is a very old holding and I think uh, looking at the kind of asset quality of uh, Indian Overseas Bank, I think it's better that he switches over uh, to something better like a federal bank or maybe, uh, you know, something like uh, maybe a Bank of Baroda if he wants to stick to some public sector bank. Uh, IOB definitely has a smaller size balance sheet, a uh, higher degree of, uh, you know, asset quality issues. So I think uh, a federal bank would definitely uh, be a better option from the private sector space. In fact, the business commentary from the Q1 has come out very strongly. Their CASA ratio has also significantly improved. And I think the risk reward in a federal bank looks far better than IOB. So I would suggest the investor should make a switch because here, uh, he, I think it is unlikely that he could recover his cost price. And at the same time, you know, federal bank would offer a better risk reward over the next, say, 12 to 15 months. All right, this next query that I have is uh, coming in uh, from uh, Somitra Joshi. And Somitra wants a fundamental expert to quantify on the approximate fear of business loss, if any, for IEX due to uh, the two new exchanges and what are the future prospects uh, for IEX. What's your take on this one, Avinash? We know that there has been a new, uh, new power exchange as well. Uh, what's the prospect for IEX? Do you think that it threatens its market share now? Yeah, I think you must understand one thing that IEX was a monopoly with a market share of almost 98%. Uh, and the market for uh, power trading in India is very large. So, you know, it's hardly about uh, 5 to 6% where, you know, ground has been covered here. So my sense is that despite the fact that another, you know, power exchange comes in, uh, it is not going to make uh, IEX a marginal player. In fact, market share will definitely reduce because obviously more competition means uh, market share is going to be eaten away. But uh, it's not going to be significant. And at least over the next couple of years, this market supremacy is going to be maintained. And uh, I think the investor should realize that, you know, these things are very normal in a business where earlier there was just one player and now there are going to be another one or two players. So I think business opportunity still continues to be very large. The headroom for growth is extremely, you know, very, very large. And that should not, uh, you know, bother an investor uh, for IEX. Although, in the very near term, the markets could obviously, you know, give a negative kind of discounting to IEX. But once the numbers come out, the financials speak for themselves. I think you could see a good uptick on the IEX stock. Okay. Uh, Priyanka Suba has got a question on Godrej Consumer. She's bought at levels of uh, 937.65. She's sitting on some losses, she points out. And she's looking to hold for about six months. Kunal, what's the prospect on the charts? See, it looks attractive. Godrej Consumers, uh, discussing this stock, in fact, recommended uh, this 
in three or four days back as well at 845 50 odd levels so it's done pretty well for itself now it crossed the 200 day moving average but the only concern with these fmcg stocks is the recent rally so the rally for fmcg names hul godrej consumers has been in the excess of uh, you know 10 percent plus in the last uh, you know 10 10 to uh, 12 trading sessions now that's a very rare kind of a phenomena which you see for these fmcg names they're traditionally known for going into multi-month uptrend and that too with the same quantum of 10 odd percent but when it happens in a restricted kind of a time frame or a shorter time frame you expect the stock to get to a consolidation so i think a better trade for Goodrich consumers would be to try and maybe look out for an exit over here and then look to buy back again if the stock consolidates and gives you a correction even if the stock retraces back towards its 200 dma uh, it could head back towards 855 860 so you could probably get that marginal advantage from your uh, earlier cost price all right, this next query that I have is from Mr. Gupta. And yes, Mr. Gupta, I am taking your query, not because you've complimented uh, me or Vinny or even Kunal. Uh, so yes, taking your query as you've been early on the show. So uh, this one is coming for you, Kunal. Ashok Leyland, 145 call option. Do you think it is a buy at current market price? Well, I would not look to buy at current levels uh, on Ashok Leyland purely because the stock has already given a decent run up. So when I look at the last three months of charts, it's been a consistent price move for itself. Uh, what happens is typically when the stock gets into such kind of a strong uptick mode, for example, from the June lows of 128, if I'm not wrong, the stock is at 146, which is um, uh, approximately a jump of 15% for Ashok Leyland. You know, the cream of the of the options, they generally get you know, eroded after such a kind of a short term spike in, in stock prices. And when the stock consolidates, the option premium tends to reduce significantly. So buying an in the money option and that too of a stock which has risen of 15% may not be a good strategy. I would suggest an avoid. Okay. Uh, the next counter is Jubilant Foodworks. And this is a question from Rahul. He's writing in from Hyderabad. He's already acquired Avinash at levels of 588. And he's wondering whether to purchase more to sell his current holding or whether to uh, hold on at this juncture. Uh, and he's looking at a, a period of the next five years, which is plenty of time. No, I think Alex, uh, he can continue to hold on because uh, see, as far as the QSR business is concerned, I think this is one space where uh, you know the revenue is going to grow by at least 25-30%, not only for Jubilant, but for the entire sector as a whole. And I think post the COVID uh, normalcy has come in now, a lot of people are going out and eating out. So I think the dine out business, which was actually completely absent previous year, is now going to also contribute significantly. Plus, uh, Jubilant has also introduced some new uh, food varieties uh, in, uh, in its food menu. So that is obviously going to add to its uh, you know, realization going forward. So I think if he's got a two year plus view, he should continue to hold on. I would not be surprised that the first quarter numbers for FY23 should be quite solid. Uh, very important numbers would be the same store uh, sales growth, which I think uh, in the past one or two quarters was slightly below expectation. But if that improves, then I think you could see a significant deteriorating not only in the medium term, but even in the short term. So continue to hold on. Uh, a good, a definitely a good risk reward can happen over the next say, couple of years. Ajay is asking, uh, is it better to have big positions in four to five stocks or have small positions in 50 to 20, uh, 15 to 20 stocks? Actually, you know, uh, Kunal, I'm sure that this is a query that it arises in a lot of new investors' mind as to how should one actually look to build a portfolio. Which way do you think you should be in four to five big stocks or 15 to uh, 20 uh, smaller positions uh, in 15 to 20 stocks? So I would say it's a mix of both. You know, there, there may not be a perfect answer for each individual, uh, but then you have to have uh, you know arrive at a point where you can handle the number of stocks which you have in your portfolio. By handling, I mean you can keep on tracking the stocks. Look at maybe if you're if you're looking at it from a fundamental point point of view, you can keep on tracking the developments on on terms of quarterly reports uh, results for these stocks or any events which play out uh, you know during uh, you know the markets or you know in process. Uh, in, in the gap between the two quarterly results for those individual names and then try and ensure that you uh, you know act upon the stock if in case there is any kind of a major positive or negative development i would probably expect that a 7 to 10 number of stocks would be a good amount of an idle portfolio structure so uh, out of those 7 or 10 stocks you can have maybe 3 stocks or 4 stocks which could be you know con considered as high conviction trades from your end and they could be slightly positioned on the higher side 
uh, as compared to the rest of the other uh, you know six seven stocks. So I think that's that's what an ideal structure would look like. But again, as I said, the answer and the uh, uh, you know outcome could probably differ from each individual to each individual. No, certainly, it depends, of course, on your risk profile and your risk taking ability as well. But I think Kunal, what you're saying uh, it matches what a lot of people say in terms of the construction of a long term portfolio as well. You have an anchor, which is the part of your core portfolio, and then you use a satellite allocation to have a kicker in your portfolio. I think that makes a lot of sense. But Avinash, coming to you on TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, we've spoken about it uh, at length in the recent past. It's expected to benefit significantly from the rupee depreciation on the bottom line. Uh, we've got a question coming from Korean Matthew. He's writing in from Cochin and he's asking, should it be bought at the current level for five years? No, I think, uh, Alex, uh, you know, TCS is one company which has generated immense wealth for shareholders in the last, you know, uh, 10 to 15 years. In fact, uh, I remember, you know, uh, ever since people actually applied for the TCS IPO, they have benefited significantly in terms of bonus and buybacks. In fact, uh, they have made four buybacks and uh, uh, all the buybacks have generated a lot of wealth for the shareholders. So I think if the investor has a three to four year view, I think definitely uh, IT in uh, business in our country, uh, you know, uh, considering TCS bandwidth and capability is going to grow significantly. Uh, but there would be ups and downs and obviously every sector goes through cycles. So if one were to look at the next two years, which is a more realistic picture, I would believe that, you know, post COVID, they've done a lot of work on cloud, digital. And I think uh, the recent management commentary has been very strong. The rupee tailwind would obviously add to the benefit of the company. So I think if you are thinking of buying, uh, buy uh, TCS in small SIP kind of you know bits and pieces, which would give you a better risk reward over the next say two to three years. From Varun Rao, and he's saying that he's holding South Indian Bank 25,000 shares at a price of 24 rupees per share since the last five years. Right now, he's thinking about booking loss and moving to another bank. And if yes, he's asking if he can shift to Indescent Bank. Kunal, five years of holding South Indian Bank, uh, yes, uh, fundamentally also it has been a deteriorating counter. Uh, do you think it's time to move out and go to Indescent? I think the time has gone by and I think the viewer is a, a, a lot, uh, you know, late in terms of making that shift. You know, you have to have certain kind of a stop loss, whether it's a 20% stop loss, even if it's a 40% stop loss, you know, there has to be certain cap from your existing, uh, you know, buy price, which you have to have for such kind of, uh, you know, contra bets, which you take on those, uh, uh, you know, underperforming stocks. But then uh, at current levels, I think it makes a lot of sense to switch towards uh, large cap private sector banks. I would, of course, give more focus towards the likes of ICICI Bank. But then uh, I think Indescent Bank, in terms of price value at around 800, 820 mark, I think also looks very attractive on the longer term time scale. In fact, on the monthly as well as on the quarterly charts, many of the indicators have come back into deep oversold territory, which could probably indicate that possibly over the next three, four, five years, Indescent Bank can stand to outperform. But that's a big probability. Uh, at current levels, ICICI Bank stands to be one of the strongest performing name. So if you can allocate it, maybe 50% towards ICICI Bank and 50% towards Indusin Bank, that could be a prudent allocation. Okay. Um, a quick view, Kunal, on uh, Godrej Consumer. You've already talked about it, but uh, I'm going to add Tata Consumer products to that as well. Pratiksha wants to know the immediate resistance levels for these two counters. So Godrej Consumers, as I said, uh, I think closer to 900 should be an immediate resistance. That's what I believe that the momentum, momentum should uh, you know, fade out for the stock for some more days. And for Tata Communication, the similar levels could be approximately at 755 to 760 kind of a zone. Okay, this one is uh, coming in. Uh, I, I don't have the name of the viewer, uh, but the, uh, the name is RPSG on YouTube. And he's saying that he's holding HDFC Life 600 shares at a price of 700 rupees per share. He's looking to hold on to it for the next 10 years, Avinash. So he wants to know whether he should add more uh, and what should be the maximum allocation to his portfolio, uh, a, a maximum allocation of uh, for HDFC Life in his portfolio, because he's saying that he's already holding ICICI Lombard in his portfolio. Yeah, I think uh, uh, my sense is, I think if he has got a uh, two to three year view, then SDFC life can definitely be accumulated again in a SIP format, uh, not in a lump sum uh, kind of uh, kind of process. Uh, what is important is that insurance is a very large sector. And I think, uh, you know, uh, companies like SDFC life have got a very large uh, business presence because of their, uh, you know, parentage. Most importantly, they've been very profitable. And I don't think, you know, fundamentally, the business is at risk. In fact, over the next say two to three years, the balance sheet size, as well as the uh, business opportunity size is very large. So he can accumulate a little more stocks. 
at the current odd levels uh, but again via sip route and as far as allocations are concerned cheryl i think uh, technically you know we always advise our clients that they should not go beyond 6 to 7% in every stock so i think beyond that uh, you know it's uh, unadvisable to take a very large exposure on insurance because that exposes the uh, you know portfolio to one particular sector or one particular stocks in a significant way so i think keep your allocations tight around 6 to 7% and i think uh, you know if he has not done that then i think he should aim to actually increase his allocations up to this level <laughs> An interesting question for you, uh, Avinash, and this is on the fundamentals. We've got Munaf who's writing in from Vadodara, and he's asking for an emerging technology company, a blue chip company, which he can buy for the next 25 to 30 years. He points out, when I mentioned to him that you should look at five-year periods and review your company holding on a regular basis, he says that he's inherited shares from his father and he doesn't really intend to sell any of them uh, over the next 20 years or so. So what stock, according to you, will uh, stand the test of time? Yeah, I think, uh, Alex, giving a view for 20 years is a little difficult because as all of us agree that many things change uh, over a longer period, period, uh, period of time. But I think over the next five years, I would say that electric vehicles is one area where possibly a lot of uh, changes as well as development and progress is going to come in and here I think a company called uh, KPIT you know which is basically uh, largely catering to the electric vehicle sector is definitely bound to benefit significantly uh, if he wants uh, a direct exposure in electric vehicle uh, you know component manufacturers then he can also look at a company called Sonacom which is basically a company which is largely focused on the electric vehicle business and is progressing very well so I think both of these companies, you know, if um, we've got a question on sale and this is coming in from Mr. Parsi, who's writing in from Bengaluru and he's saying that he's holding at uh, levels of 90 and he feels that those levels are a little sticky. He's wondering whether to buy more Kunal for the long term and he's defined this as three to five years. Well, I would suggest to hold on, not to add at current levels. I understand that the stock is lower from your initial enterprise price of 90 and now it's almost at 70 odd levels for itself. But then, uh, you know, the chart patterns have been for not just for sale, but for the entire metal names have been a bit more dicier. There is bound to be more correction, uh, at least looking at the global asset classes on the commodity front. And I think that could probably have a direct impact into these, uh, you know, stocks over the near to medium term. So I would suggest to hold on. The best strategy for these kind of names is to buy when these stocks are actually going up higher because price is the ultimate factor. If prices starts to get into a breakout mode, that's where I believe we should look to buy, even if it's, uh, you know, buying the stock at a slight higher level. So possibly if the stock crosses that level of 80 is where I believe a lot of confidence could come back uh, from market participants. So not to buy at current levels, but wait out for the stock to break out of 80 levels. That could be a point where you can look to average. Okay, uh, Kunal, I'm coming back to you and this is a question coming in from Sudha. She's a senior citizen and she's asking uh, for a short-term target on Axis Bank. If I'm not mistaken, this is one bank from the uh, banking pack that has underperformed in the recent past. Uh, she's bought at levels of 650. What should her strategy be? So I think I would I would probably uh, you know say that you can hold on to your invest uh, short-term trading uh, you know call over here on Axis Bank. 650 is where you've bought 655 approximately. I think is where the stock is trading right now. Uh, today's high for, for example, for Axis Bank is around 665. You look at the last one month of price uh, patterns, the stock has been trying to meander at the 665 to you know, 685 kind of a trading range. So there should be another at least 20 points on the upside for Axis Bank. If you've managed to buy at 650 levels, I would suggest a hold till 685 as a very immediate and a shorter term target. Okay. All right, so let's take the next question. This is coming in from uh, Surjit from Guwahati. And uh, he's holding HUL, which he bought at levels of 2,284. I do not know the time frame, but Avinash, this is a time when we're once again talking about FMCG companies making a comeback. You have palm oil prices that have uh, come down. And so that is a good prospect for uh, these companies. You also have uh, the monsoons, as is evident, that have uh, made a sharp recovery. And uh, hopefully the spatial distribution will be good and rural economy picks up yet again. So would you say on the fundamentals it makes sense to hold? Yeah, I think, uh, Alex, uh, you know, the investor can hold on to Hindustan Unilever because my guess is that, uh, you know, after a span of almost uh, two years, the FMCG sector is now uh, looking quite attractive considering the fact that uh, good monsoon would boost up the volume growth. 
secondly as you rightly mentioned palm oil prices have corrected sharply and that is a key raw material for most of the fmcg companies so margin expansion is going to happen plus uh, agro uh, commodities you know have also prices have come down so that is also going to benefit uh, you know companies like britannia or for that reason lever and that is definitely going to get reflected in their ebitda margin so i think if the investor can hold on for the next say 12 15 months uh, definitely 23 is going to be a better year compared to last year and i think uh, hindustan lever being one of the market leaders would obviously benefit both in terms of the market share as well as the price uh, upside so continue to hold on right uh, the next uh, query that i have is uh, coming from um, janvi and she wants to know whether she should buy mahindra and mahindra right now uh, kunal uh, mahindra and mahindra one way i know you've been very uh, bullish on this particular counter but do you think now is the right time do you think now you can enter mahindra and mahindra but i would say it's not too late to buy the stock uh, even at current levels but then what matters is uh, how much quantum and how much quantity do you buy now assuming as I, as i typically say that when a stock rallies up significantly higher you miss the advantage of trying to buy the stock at an early breakout point it's always better to try and tweak this with uh, you know reducing your positions or reducing your quantity which you are looking to buy that's a much better way because assuming if the stock gets into a correction mode post you buying the stock there is always a, you know some powder drive which you can always keep on allocating in case of the stock corrects so i think in that regards you can look to buy but maybe allocate 50% 55% of your uh, expected quantity which you were looking to buy earlier at current levels and assuming if the stock gets into a correction settle 1070 75 you can look to act uh, you can look to add the remaining balance okay uh, parveen is asking about itc and she is asking whether there's any chance or any news of a demerger of any of its business on the cards not from what we've heard in the recent past i believe there was some conversation at the end of 2021 uh, but uh, avinash uh, what would you see on the fundamentals of this stock but i think alex uh, uh, itc seems to be uh, you know at the right time uh, in the right business considering that you know all its businesses now are expected to do well in fact the cigarette business uh, has shown very strong volume growth last year and should continue in the current year also but i think uh, fmcg as a pack also should do well for them they have the hotel and the paper business also which is showing good signs of buoyancy so my sense is that you know over the next say 12 to 15 months all the levers for growth for itc look well positioned and in terms of uh, margins they have already done very pretty high margins uh, they enjoy roes of in excess of 25% the company is a free cash flow generating machine so my sense is that even at these levels if the investor were to buy uh, he could expect a decent upside here so continue to hold on if you have it but even if one were to buy the stock at the current levels one could expect levels of 330 335 so i think uh, within the uh, fmcg pack or maybe as a diversified player ITC definitely should do well over the next 12 to 15. Okay, and that's okay, the view coming in on ITC. Let's talk about KPR Mills then. Jay Krishnan has KPR Mills purchased at 706 rupees per share for the medium term, but wants to know what to do uh, with this particular account. Uh, should uh, uh, Jay Krishnan continue to hold, sell, or average? And if average, at what level? And if sell, then what? Uh, which other stock can uh, Jay Krishnan look at, Kunal? So I think KPR Mills is a very good stock from a longer term play. Yes, you've bought at the much higher end of the price target. At, I think at seven hundred and five six, where you've bought the stock made a high of seven sixty seven sixty nine for itself, and from there the stock has corrected now, and it's almost at those five hundred rupees for itself. So what we can do uh, idly is have a you know a, a strategy where you can look to buy or average the stock at every fifteen to twenty percent from your initial holding price. So assuming if you've bought at seven hundred uh, you know five level seven hundred approximately, then you know one hundred fifty one hundred sixty points lower, which means closer to five forty odd mark is a good level where you can. to average the stock is available below those leverage levels so i think at current levels i would suggest to average out ismail wants to know about sudarshan chemical which uh, he has bought at levels of 775.6 and uh, he's looking for a long term view avinash what's the view on the fundamentals i think uh, my sense is he should continue to you know look at this stock from a long term perspective because uh, you know the uh, overall export basket of this company is doing well in fact there are many hni investors who have entered this stock at lower levels and still continue to hold on uh, i would believe that you know the agro business as well as the pigment business and the export business should do well in fy23 uh, certain cost pressures had uh, you know made the company underperform in the last one or two quarters but if the investor is looking at the next 12 to 18 months i think he should hold on 
this definitely has a bright future and i think overall fy23 should be a lot better right uh, uh, this one is uh, coming in from sagar okay and sagar is writing on behalf of his friend uh, he's saying that he's not a big investor or trader and doesn't see market that often but has lost a lot of ground and technically he needs circuit stocks to recover his money so kunal Uh, they've come to you for a rescue, and he wants to know which is a good stock that he can look to invest in in the short term to recover all the lost ground. I don't have any circuit <laughs> stocks. I apologize for that. But then I think if you're looking to buy some good quality names, I think it's a good time where you can look to add. You know, stocks have been uh, you know uh, marred, or there's been a prof profit a uh, price correction of. 30% uh, on an average for these large cap names so i think it's a good time to try and build your portfolio at current levels forget about what has happened over the last one or two weeks whether the nifty has rallied up 500 700 points from its previous lows look at what could probably be uh, the path ahead for the uh, markets i think that's a better strategy so would suggest to allocate on good quality large cap names rather than looking at those very cheap very risky kind of a you know a scenario in terms of small caps you know because yeah. kunal it's an established trend that if a circuit can take place on the upside a circuit can in fact take place on the downside Correct. and it gets very very difficult to exit your position once that uh, happens uh, we've got the next question coming in from sai and he's asking on masgon dock ship builders and this is uh, for you avinash he's bought at levels of 255 what should his strategy on the fundamental side be I think uh, you're on. Because I think uh, Alex, uh, if you have a two-year kind of view, then I think this stock can definitely make a decent amount of money. I think uh, this is not one of those stocks which is uh, very volatile uh, because largely PSU companies are slow movers. But if you look at the balance sheet, if you look at the order book, uh, they have an order book of almost four and a half to five thousand crores. So I think clearly, uh, if one were to look at the long-term prospects, defence as a sector is definitely you know uh, in flavour. and this company should do well i think keep a time frame of at least uh, you know one and a half to two years because obviously you could get the real benefit only if you give this kind of time frame to this stock okay uh, sagar has actually um, uh, replied uh, saying that the stock that he had invested in was solara active kunal so that is why uh, this particular uh, reaction to the particular counter uh, but uh, let's move on and let me take a next query uh, mukil i know you are asking as a query on silver bars we only talk about stocks in this particular counter uh, so therefore would not be able to take your query on this one uh, but uh, this one is from indumati she is holding map my india at an ipo price she wants to know whether it's good time to accumulate more for the longer term uh what's your take on this one uh, avinash mathma india uh, do you track this one and do you think it's time to accumulate some more yeah i think uh, sarel this is one of those unique companies you know which is into a very uh, exclusive space mathma india is into basically uh, mapping and which is the only company after google to do it in fact uh, of course mathma india is a very small player as compared to google but uh, i think the opportunities which this company is looking at is immense i think they are large uh, you know the suppliers to mapping services to the automotive industry and they've got a lot of uh, local and uh, international companies as their clients i think many more segments are likely to be covered in the next 2 to 3 years and it's a technology savvy business because uh, you know it's all about technology and it's all about how you scale it up in the given uh, opportunity so i would suggest that you know if the investor has a long term view definitely this is one company one should hold on uh, for a time frame of at least 1 to 2 years Uh, the stock has, uh, you know, uh, done remarkably well after its IPO, but definitely some more re-rating will happen only when the company puts out some more customer lineup and more segments which it wants to cater. So continue to hold on, but keep a time frame of at least one to two years. Vivek has got an interesting question, Kunal, and I think this uh, is going to be useful for a lot of people. Uh, he's asking for momentum stocks for the next three to four months. The question really is: Have we reached a time in the market when you can start playing momentum? Well, absolutely. Yes, I would agree that uh, I think it's a good time to try and play momentum. So, momentum difficult uh, technically means that when stock breaks out of its earlier swing resistances or when the RSI reaches a certain threshold point beyond which you see the stock gaining a lot of acceleration and not uh, uh, and not the price trend to fizzle out pretty soon 
So we've seen that, for example, to put, to put in place, uh, you know, the, we've seen that happening for the auto stocks. We've, we saw that happening for the FMCG names over the last three, four days, where the momentum kept on building on and you saw the stocks making fresh short-term highs for themselves. And now the momentum seems to be shifting towards the banking names. Few of the names which I would probably uh, reiterate and, and the ones which I've given in the last few days as well, something like Federal Bank at current levels of 93, 94, looks very attractive to me. City Union Bank is one of the mid-cap names which looks extremely attractive. Indus in Bank is something which you can look at as a potential fresh breakout candidate from a short-term play. And if you're looking at it from the PSU banking names, I would probably expect Canada Bank and Bank of Burda to be stronger price performers from a very near-term play. Okay, this uh, next query has kind of left me speechless. This one is from Mr. KJ Singh. He bought Tata Alexi four years ago at a price of 700 rupees per share. And I would request my producer, Adharaj, to uh, show us the uh, stock price of uh, Tata Alexi right now. And as I can see, the stock is trading at around 8,000 rupees per share. So there you go. That's Tata Alexi for you. 700 was a buy price of KJ Singh. Uh, he is a long-term investor. He's asking what should the strategy be for the next five years. Avinash. All right, I think we've lost uh, uh, Avinash's uh, uh, video. Uh, so, Kunal, Tata Alexi, what a buy, right? Four years ago, 700, rup uh, 700 rupees was a buy price for KJ Singh. And what a rally that counter has had during the COVID era, 8,000 rupees. Well, I would say this is, uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, super congratulations to the viewer. I think this is timing at its best uh, when it comes to a stock like Tata Alexi. Uh, and I think, I, th I think from those points of 700, the stock has done exceptionally well. You've uh, you know uh, gone into a 10x kind of a return in just a matter of four years. I would now expect that the stock, even though it looks very attractive from current levels and probably has room for another maybe 800,000 points on the upside, I think 9,000 is where I believe the stock should try and reach over the next three to six months. But then I think it's also prudent enough to try and rebalance your portfolio, maybe try and look out for you know, taking your initial capital out or maybe 50% of your profits at current levels and then look to ride the trend on the upside with the remaining capital. And you can do a fresh allocation of your uh, profits which you book into some of the names. I think that would be a be much better strategy for a stock like Tata Alexi. Avinash, we lost you on uh, while I asked this uh, query. Uh, Tata Alexi 700 was a buy price for KJ Singh. Right now at 8,000 rupees, he's a long-term investor. Wants to know what's the strategy that he should have for the next five years on this particular account and what a gain. Yeah, absolutely. I think Cheryl, uh, you know, exactly uh, what, uh, you know, Kunal said, that timing is very important. And I think uh, this company is going to do extremely well over the next, say, two to three years. So because it's not a typical IT services company, uh, it has got IT uh, embedded services, plus it caters to a lot of uh, growth sectors like telecom, media, entertainment, and obviously medical devices. So I think going forward, uh, you know, uh, they've been also trying out technologies on uh, driverless cars, you know, which is also a very large kind of segment, which is going to emerge very strong, uh, not only in the developed markets, but even in, uh, you know, in Indian markets going forward. So my sense is that I think he should continue to hold on because growth year is going to continue. And despite the fact that the stock has now become a larger stock in terms of its base value, uh, earnings growth over the next say two to three years are still going to be strong and as long as earnings growth continue to be strong in the region of say 20 25 percent every year i would not be surprised that this stock would continue to scale new highs so continue to hold on and i think uh, you know there's no need to book out uh, profits in this stock in a hurry maybe the investor can book out and recover his capital but he should continue to hold on the rest of the quantity for a further upside over the next say two to three years all right. Uh, quickly, Kunal, uh, our uh, viewer, Mahindra Patnayak, had written to us on Monday on PC Jewelers. You answered that query as well. He's saying that he has 1,700 shares of uh, PC Jewelers at 23 rupees per share. Stock has seen a breakout today. Should I book profits or will it rally further? I think from a short-term play, you can look to book out. And I remember clearly, I think I uh, mentioned to hold on to the stock for a potential target of 30 to 33, even if it's a short-term play. I think the stock has reached those levels of 31.9, 32 as an intraday high. So you can look to book out your short-term gains over here. Or else, if you're looking to hold this from a long-term play, trail your stop loss to maybe a 27 and then hold on for higher targets of at least 37 to 40 on PC Jewelers. Okay, uh, gentlemen, it's time to hit the rapid fire segment. You know what that means. We're going to throw questions at you over the next two minutes and do answer very quickly. Uh, Denny Matthew is writing in from the UK. He's holding Kohinoor Foods at levels of 65. He's uh, intending to hold for the next three years. Should he do so, Avinash? 
yeah i think he should hold on uh, prospects look pretty good so alex he should continue to hold on Nino wants a exit plan for Surya Roshni. Uh, Kunal purchased it at five four hundred ninety rupees per share. What should be the strategy? Be I would suggest to hold on to the stock even at current levels. Punjab National Bank is the name of the counter. Uh, average price of thirty eight rupees. Uh, we've got uh, Arvind, I believe. No, Chirag is writing in. He's asking Avinash should he hold on for the next five years. I think he should hold on. Most of the negatives are in the price, and I think if he's got a five year view, then I think he should continue to hold on. Joseph Matthew has 100 shares of L&T Tech uh, at around uh, 4,500 rupees per share. What should he do, Kunal? I would suggest to hold on. Possibly, if you're looking to buy, average at current levels of 3,000. Should you add into Mahindra and Mahindra? I think you've already answered this, Kunal. But uh, also Ashok Leyland, which I think you're positive on for the next one year. Sudha wants to know. You can look to buy, but are not on not at current levels for Ashok Leyland. I would suggest to wait out for at least 137, 138. That's a better level to buy. Okay, uh, Vivek wants to know Shoba is is it a good investment in the short term, Kunal? Well, yes, I've uh, been very vocal on the real estate stocks, and I think Shoba and Suntec Realty have been two of the picks in that regard. I would suggest a buy. IIFL is the name of the counter, Kunal. Three hundred and seventy-two is a buy price. Ashish wants to know whether to exit at this point. I would suggest to hold on. Possibly, if you're looking to average, three twenty-five could be a level where you can look to average further. Avinash, Mtar Tech. Do you think it's a good buy at current levels? Ganesh wants to know. Yeah, I think from a uh, longer term perspective, I think it definitely looks attractive considering its order book and you know the kind of products it caters. So continue to hold, and I think you can always look at buying on decline. Avils is the name of the counter. Avinash, this one's for you. Bought at levels of one three nine two, and this is a question from Deepak. Should he hold? Yeah, I think uh, consumer durable spaces again started looking up, and I think with the monsoon, uh, you know most of these companies, including Avils, should do well. So continue to hold on. All right, and with that we come to the end of the rapid fire as well as the query segment. Thank you so much, Kunal, as well as Avinash for joining us in the show, giving us your view on co- uh, soft capex-led uh, companies as well as resolving all the viewer queries. And viewers, we will be back tomorrow, uh, at same time, 11 a.m. is when we will start with uh, the query segment as well as with the buy and sell now. But for now, we we'll slip into a break, so don't go anywhere. Kept the focus on the retail investor, and I think this is again a very apt, very good question.